All right, in this intro right here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this business of what we're going to be doing in the um, the second unit here, and that is going to be graphing quadratic functions, okay? So in this lesson, we're going to be analyzing quadratic functions in standard form, and we're going to come to find out that, I know that uh, Mr. Ronald McDonald is uh, blocking the way there, that the McDonald's actually is made up of some parabolas, as we will see in the next coming parts. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at what lies in wait for us. So we're going to learn what is a parabola, what are the characteristics of a parabola, how do I determine the characteristics of a parabola based on a quadratic equation in standard form, how do I graph a parabola based on those characteristics? And what do parabolas represent in real life? So, looking at that, here is our vocabulary. Now, just to be uh, perfectly clear, is that this part right here, I'm going to highlight, this is the parabola, okay? And it looks like a, just a kind of a U-shape function. Okay, looks like a smiley face. Now, parabolas can also be upside down like this, but we're not looking at that in this particular example. So what we are looking at is this business of the following things. We're going to take a look at the extremum. Now, when we say extremum, that is going to be a minimum or a maximum of a parabola. And so when we look right here, this particular parabola is going to have a minimum because it is a minimum value. It looks as if when I go to this parabola right here and I follow it, it's going to have a valley. So it's going to be a minimum point right there. An example of a maximum would be a parabola that is shaped like this. That would have a maximum point that would be right here. So kind of think about it like a roller coaster going from left to right. Minimum, okay, the very, very bottom of a valley. Maximum, the very, very top of a mountain or a roller coaster before you go plummeting down and screaming, okay? The x-intercepts, okay, are going to be here and here. It can have... Um, and uh, can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. In this one, it will have 2. So the x-intercepts are going to go ahead and be right there. That's where it crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept is going to be right here, where it crosses the y-axis. A line of symmetry is going to go ahead and be right cutting the parabola in the middle. That is, is that it cuts it directly in half. A line of symmetry for this parabola over here would be like this, okay? So it just cuts it right down the middle, okay? And it goes through the um, either the lowest point or the highest point. And then finally, this is the form that we are looking at graphing these parabolas, okay? So that's just a little bit of the vocabulary. And what I want to do is that I want to take a look at how a parabola is formed uh, based on plugging in some points. And so to help us, um, we are going to use Desmos. And so what you want to do is that you want to um, type in Desmos into, so let's do that over here. Let me see if I can bring that up one minute. So to do that, how did we get to this screen? Uh, basically, you're just going to go Desmos, like that, enter it on in, and we want to do our scientific calculator, okay? So our scientific calculator is going to help plug in points um, so that we can evaluate all of the this function. So we're, what we have in is on the left-hand side is an input and output table. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to... Um, plug in for this example using the uh, the calculator here okay is that I'm going to plug these values into this function right here using the calculator and then plotting the points so the first one that I want to do 
is that I'm going to plug zero into this like so. So I'll go plug zero squared minus four times zero minus five. Okay. Now, some of us can, can do that in our head and that's understandably so. But for those folks that cannot, um, we are going to go over here and plug that into Desmos, okay? So we would go like this, zero squared, okay? And minus four times zero, and then we had a minus five. And you can see that the answer over here is going to give us a negative 5. So what we want to do is that our output is a negative 5. So the point that we're going to plot is 0, negative 5. Let's go ahead and do another one. Plugging in 1 into the function. just like this okay um, so if I plug in one over here I'm just gonna change all of these to ones so let's do that so I got that guy so let's change all of these to a one and notice that I have parentheses around all these that's very important whatever input that you have you want to make sure that you are putting parentheses around it and that gives me a negative 8. So I go over here, and my output is going to be negative 8. So I would have 1, negative 8, just like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pause the video, and then I am going to put in the rest of them so we can see uh, exactly what this is going to look like. All right, as everything gets plugged in here, um, this is what we're looking at. So there's our parabolic shape, okay? And when we plugged in all those numbers and graphed them out, oh, points, we get our parabola. That looks like that. And just to go ahead and make sure that we are um, cashing in on our um, vocabulary, words is that these are our x-intercepts right here where it hits the x axis this is the y-intercept this is going to go ahead and be our line of symmetry that cuts that parabola in half and also notice that this parabola has a minimum value okay and so not a mim a minimum value and so um, that basically is going to be a lead-in of how does a parabola come to be and it comes to be by these values plugged into an equation in standard form and it's going to go ahead and look something like this when we're done we can use our Desmos graphing calculator uh, that we did over here um, to plug things in and get those values if we wish. What we're going to do in the next part of the lesson, which is the main part, is that we're going to take a look at how to graph these using specific characteristics of the parabola, and then um, without having to plug in all this stuff, all these tables and whatnot. So um, I'll see you in the next part of the video, and um, yeah, that's how you do that.